electron microscopy and production of antisera so now we will see what are all the uh, uses of electron microscope in plant virology and how antisera is produced and uh, what are all the different types of antisera and what are all the uses of antisera now we will see so my name is nh shankar reddy and i am doing phd plant pathology in anamal university so this electron microscope can be mainly used for the detection and identification of plant viruses so this electron microscope can be used for detection and identification of plant viruses from infected leaf sample or a plant sample so if the particular infected if we have the particular infected or leaf sample or the plant sample so by using electron microscopy we can identify the particular virus which is involved in the disease so the principle is involved when what is the main principle involved in the uh, 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 this electron microscope is when we prepared a sap the materials are the virus particles which are present into the sap is absorbed onto a carbon coated form or or pilo form supported copper or nickel grids here it is a very very important what are all the grids used in uh, electron microscopy is copper or nickel grids so actually this virus particles are absorbed and absorbed on a carbon coated form or or pilo form supported copper or nickel grid so here the virus particles are absorbed onto copper or nickel grids which is followed by suitable staining after that stain after staining we can visualize the particular virus so particular i mean uh, the, the infected uh, sorry uh, virus sample so the all virus particles are which is absorbed onto the particular supported films that is copper or nickel grids then after staining we can visualize the particular plant viruses so this technique is also combined with the use of antisera and how much amount of antisera is produced and how antisera is doing whether it's doing well or not by using this uh, electron microscopy technique we can use it. so the main te uh, the technique which is involved in the uh, you know antisera uh, detection and identification is isem in the sense elect uh, yeah, sorry yeah. immunosorbent electron microscopy immunosorbent electron microscopy it's also a type of electron microscopy technique but is used for the detection of uh, uh, antisera production and also used for the detection of plant viruses so this electron microscopy is very useful if we have no information is available on the particular virus if we have no information available on a particular virus by using electron microscope at least we can have some information like you know morphology how it is or you know or maybe structure uh, or at least we can have a little information by using this electron microscopy so it is also used for the characterization of new viruses it is also used for character Characterization of new viruses and also used for the detection of mixed viral infection. Let us consider if the particular uh, uh, plant is infected by different types of plant viruses or mixing of different plant viruses. So by using this plant, uh, uh, sorry, the, by using this electron microscopy technique, we can identify the all the particular vir. I mean, all the mixed viruses which is responsible for the particular diseases. So this electron microscopy technique is uh, sorry the transmission electron microscopy. So in an electron microscopy, there are some uh, different different types of electron microscopes are available that is a tem tem in the sense transmission electron microscopy one more uh, electron microscope is there that is sem in the sense scanning electron microscope of course other uh, electron microscopes also there but uh, these two electron microscope are familiarized uh, well than other uh, microscopic techniques so tem 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 in the sense transmission electron microscope sem in the sense scanning electron microscope hope you guys will know about uh, who discovered that electron microscope it was first discovered by nol and raska nol and raska invented electron microscope in 1931 so later the prototype of uh, a fully developed electron microscope was invented by raska in the year of 1913 sorry 33 sorry in the year of 1933 so the most commonly used transmission electron microscopic test includes uh, virus presence whether the particular infection in uh, in the particular infection whether virus is present or not by using tem can be uh, uh, involved in the detection of a virus presence and as well as particle morphology how the morphology is whether it is a rod shaped uh, whether it is a spherical shaped uh, whether it is a icosahedral shaped so by using uh, tem we can identify particular morphology of plant viruses so dip preparation of isem immunosorbent electron microscope as i told you earlier used for the detection and uh, you know uh, uh, how and how much amount of antisera is produced by using this isem can be used and also used for the virus enrichment and identification so also used for virus enrichment and identification so identification of plant viruses the isem also used for identification of plant viruses so these are all the uses and uh, a, a small description about uh, electron microscope 
So now we will see what are the application of electron microscope in the field of plant virology. So electron microscope in the sense study of uh, electron microscope and the uses and all the uh, combination of uh, uh, uses techniques and comes under electron microscopy comes under electron microscopy. Now we will see what are the current application and the uses of electron microscopy in plant virology. The first one is nucleic acid characterization by using this electron microscopy we can have the knowledge on virus morphology and virus nucleic acid whether the particular virus contains nucleic acid dna or rna as a nucleic acid or what are all the composition of nucleic acid and how the morphology by using this microscopy we can have uh, we can gain the knowledge on virus morphology and nucleic acid structure and combination of uh, uh, different plant viruses viroids and virucides so nucleic acid extraction is followed by DNAs. DNAs can uh, in the sense it is an enzyme which destructs DNA or RNAs which destructs uh, RNA and sucrose density gradient centrifugation which is used for the identification as well as the quantification of DNA and it is also buoyant density gradient centrifugation also used for the purification and uh, uh, extraction of uh, particular virus. So these two techniques are also used for the identification of plant virus as well as how much amount of nucleic acid is present how much amount of protein content is present the variations amount of nucleic acid or amount of uh, protein content can be identified by using this density gradient centrifugation technique and as well as buoyant density gradient centrifugation techniques this is the first one and the second one the applications in, in the sense of uh, uh, you know second one is host virus interaction so this transmission electron mic sorry transmission electron microscope is used to examine host virus interaction within the host cell how the uh, 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 sorry how the uh, uh, virus uh, the how the virus is entering into the particular plant cells how the vector are coming in contact or uh, after coming in contact how the virus is entering inside the cell how the host is reacting what are all the physiological and the biochemical reactions what happens in the cells by using a, a transmission electron microscopy we can use it to identify often used to examine the crystalline RS associated with the specific organs or the production of protein inclusion bodies that I told you in earlier inclusion bodies is the identification characters of the presence of viruses let me tell you an example so if we have a fever or something else it, it, it identifies that we have some disease or some pathogen that enters into, enters into our body so here the presence of inclusion bodies inside the plant cells indicates the infection of plant viruses or the presence of plant viruses so if the inclusion bodies are there definitely virus infection will be there due to virus infection only inclusion bodies are produced so inclusion bodies are the identification characters of the particular plant viruses so different types of uh, uh, different types and shapes of inclusion bodies are produced based on the viruses so as example is potato virus why and which streak mosaic viruses are uh, uh, can be uh, uh, identified uh, host uh, host virus interaction has been identified by using this uh, electron microscopy techniques send the analytical applications of electron microscope now we will see what are all the analytical uses and applications of electron microscope will be there so the uses of tem that i told you transmission electron microscopy sim scanning electron microscopy so beyond the normal applications in morphological and anatomical studies so mainly used for morphological and anatomical studies how the shape size and how you know, different types of compositions by using this uh, electron microscopy we can use it to identify and the examples are auto radiography what are all the different types of techniques that are used in electron microscopy is auto radiography specific staining a specific antibody ferritin or the antibody collateral labeling of x-rays different types of these are all techniques used for the identification of morphology and anatomical studies are the composition of uh, various plant viruses so now we will see about immunosorbent electron microscopy isem it is one of the most important techniques in uh, electron microscopy so this technique was first introduced by Derrick as a serologically specific electron microscopy SSEM. So initially Derrick called it as a SSEM in the sense serologically specific electron microscopy and it is a very widely used in a plant virology nowadays. So because of this reliability and different types of uses or different types of feasibilities now it is one of the most widely used technique in a plant virology for the detection and identification of plant viruses. So because of similarity with the solid phase immunoassays, this method uh, will become known as immunosorbent electron microscopy. Initially it is called the SSEM. So because of its similarity with the solid phases immunoassays, solid phases immunoassays, now it is called as immunosorbent electron microscopy. The main principle involved in electron microscopy as that is uh, immunosorbent electron microscopy, selective trappings of viruses 
on electron microscope grids that I told you copper or nickel can be used as a, uh, a grids in electron microscopy. So here this in this technique the main principle involved in the selective trapping of a plant viruses. So the plant viruses are stained as I told you any earlier it was strapped and absorbed onto the nickel or copper grids that is coated with the specific anti serum. So the viruses are after after having the uh, sap solution so it is coated with a specific anti serum and it is trapped on the electron microscopic grids. So this is the principle involved in the immunosorbent electron microscopy. Now we will see a little procedure about uh, how immunosorbent electron microscopy works. So the virus particles as I told you trapped onto the antibody coated grids. I told you antibodies initially coated onto the grids. So which contains a little uh, uh, no, contaminants of uh, host plant material. So host plant materials are collected. So it contains of little contaminants in the sense of virus infections. So uh, now we want to detect plant viruses. So it contains a little contaminants of host plant material with the plant virus infection samples. So now it is trapped on, uh, trapped on antibody coated grids. The grids are coated with the antibody. The grids are coated with the antibody. Now after coating that, after coating and having the uh, host plant material, the grids are strained with 1% uryl, uh, sorry, uranyl acetate or 50, in 50% ethanol. 1% uranyl acetate in 50% ethanol can be stained to the grids and the electron microscope sample as the sample is dried and absorbed in the electron microscope. So after having the sample, the grids are strained with 1% uranyl acetate in 50% ethanol solution and the sample is dried and absorbed under electron microscope. So this technique has been used to detect polyhedral and rod shaped viruses. So this technique especially employed for to detect polyhedral and rod shaped viruses. Best example of rod shaped TMV. So by using this technique we can uh, use it to detect TMV. And it is a great advantage uh, because of it requires very small amount of antiser. Small amount of antiser and antigen is required for uh, identification of plant viruses. And moreover it doesn't require any labeling antibodies. We don't need to label antibodies in this particular technique. It is also used to degree uh, estimate the degree of serological relationship between viruses. So what are the serological relationship between plant viruses by using this technique we can also use it to estimate the serological relationship between the particular viruses. So why does ISEM is mostly most widely used in now we will see this is the highly reliable technique so no false positives because almost we can get a 99% of true genuine answers are true genuine you know uh, uh, so, uh, ex exact answers or exact results. So it is a, a highly reliable technique as like of a sensitive of ELISA. ELISA will take just, a, you know, uh, as like of ELISA. ELISA can detect plant viruses exactly are most reliable, almost 99.9%. .9 and it is as like of ELISA, it is also very fast. It doesn't require more than one or two hours. So within one or two hours, we can uh, uh, identify the plant viruses. We can quantify that particular plant viruses. And it's also very simple technique and we can perform in uh, laboratories or almost all reagents are uh, available in uh, laboratory regarding this. And it also consists of a requirement of a less anti serum as well as antibody. So, due to this all uh, feasibilities and uh, due to this all uh, advantages, this technique get familiarized in uh, uh, in the in the field of uh, plant virology for the detection and the quantification of plant viruses. So now we will see the next one, the production of anti sera. So now we will see how anti sera is produced and what are the uses of anti sera. So before that, uh, let me give uh, the definition of anti sera. So a serum containing antibodies produced by the natural or artificial immunity against a given antigen from a animal or human body. So antigen in the sense a foreign substances or chemical or maybe bacteria or virus or infectious material that enters into the human body. If the antigen which is enters from the outside, the antibodies which are present in the human system or animal system that can identify the foreign substance that is antigen. So antigen is a foreign substance or chemical that can have may harm a human or animal body. So in response of the antigen, a Y-shaped structure or immunity structures that is produced or immunity structures that is antibodies. So due to antigen reactions, the antibodies are produced against antigen so that uh, immunity can be boosted. A serum containing antibodies. So antibodies are produced inside the body. So whereas antigen is a foreign substance or chemical that is entered into the human body from outside the system. So now you will see what are the types of sera. This is about definition of anti-sera. 
Now we'll see the types of antisera. So antisera is of two types, homogeneous serum and heterogeneous serum. So coming to the homogeneous serum, so this homogeneous serum is obtained from the blood donor volunteers have been immunized. So this uh, this volunteers have been immunized with uh, different types of immu uh, sorry different types of uh, immunity substances. So the and the blood material or the blood of uh, volunteers who has been collected, the serum material can be obtained. This is called homogeneous antiserum. So if it is collected from the blood donors or the humans, a serum obtained from the blood donor volunteers have been immunized. So immunized volunteers or immunized blood donors containing serum is called homogeneous serum. Now the second serum is heterogeneous serum. The serum is obtained from blood of animals, especially horse, or hyper immunized or hyper immunized or hyper immunized in the sense it more than one step is more than immunization. The hyper immunization blood of horse has been collected that is called heterogeneous serum. So now we will see what are the important some of the terms, uh, uh, terms used in uh, uh, anti-sera. Uh, the first one is AVDT, second one is specificity, third one is titer or titre plus something like that we can call titer. So the first one is AVDT. AVDT in the sense it measures the strength of interactions of antibodies with an antigen. How strongly or how strengthily antibodies that is produced inside the body that is reacting with antigen or identifying or destroying the particular antigen or boosting the immunity system. So this avidity in the sense anti serum that measures the strength of interactions between antibody and antigen. So now the specificity in the sense it measures the anti serum how the ability of antibodies to distinguish the immunogen from the related antigen in the sense how capable or the how ability the antibodies have to identify the particular antigen and boosting the immunity system so the third one is titer titer in the sense it is the final dilution employed for this procedure so the anti serum is the final dilution which is employed for this procedure over here the titer depends on the concentration of antibodies how antibodies are concentratedly a concentration the amount or we can say that uh, how powerful it is uh, the concentration of antibodies present on the and their affinity of a antigen how concentrated uh, how concentratedly or how 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 a number number of uh, amount of uh, antibodies are produced it depends on uh, you know uh, concentration of antibodies uh, uh, that depends on this titer will deals with this this concentration of antibodies on a particular uh, affinity of a antigen now we had seen uh, avidity specificity and titer avidity in the sense it measures the length of sorry strength of interactions of antigen and antibody whereas specificity which de de deals with the uh, ability of a specific antibody that determining that specific related antigen so the titer in the sense uh, the interactions are the concentration sorry concentration of antibodies that is present in the affinities of the antigen so uh, this is the term so now we will see how this anti sera is produced now we will see how anti sera is produced before that how, what are the materials are required for this production of anti sera now we will see so basically uh, you know for uh, uh, in a laboratory experiment how uh, mostly basically performing experiment now, now i'm uh, going to explain so for six rabbits of uh, uh, six rabbits has been taken so at least uh, each rabbit should be 2 kilo body weight so minimum 2 kilo body weight of rabbits only can be selected for uh, this production of anti sera so this uh, body uh, this rabbits can be of various types mostly new zealand whites or uh, dutch type of rabbits can be selected for this technique and a solution purified immunogen with an appropriate buffer to maintain the stability so the purified immunogen can be that is the immunogen in the sense that can boost the immunity or immune substances that is simply we can call it as antigen the, so if the antigen or antigen in the sense they don't inject the powerful chemicals they may be inject or dyed substances or uh, dyed chemical sorry dyed uh, bacteria dyed viruses or uh, unstrengthened pl plant viruses or bacteria uh, can be prepared as a immunogen or antigen antigen so this antigen can be uh, sorry this immunogen can be appropriate uh, 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 that can be diluted with an appropriate buffer for maintaining uh, their stability and then complete or incomplete frat uh, sorry frat adjuvant are uh, available and commercial uh, uh, sources so frat adjuvant is required and then heat lamp hope you guys will know about what is adjuvant so adjuvant is in substances uh, which can enhance the immune system with the help of antigen with the presence of antigen so uh, we already have antigen that is immunogen antigen with the help of 
sorry with the, uh, with the help of or with in the presence of adjuvant uh, sorry in the presence of antigen it can enhance the immune system adjuvant is a substance which can enhance or boost the immune system with the presence of antigen so the materials required is rabbit uh, six rabbits each one of a two kilo body weight mainly new zealand whites or dutch can be used the solution of antigen that is a purified immunogen can be prepared and frats adjuvant along with heat lamp so now we will see the procedure one volume of uh, one volume is mixed with the three volume of frat adjuvant so one volume of immunogen so one volume of immunogen can be mixed with three volume of frat adjuvant adjuvant is a substance as i told you earlier so one volume of this immunogen can be mixed with three volume of frat adjuvant and then this mixture can be transformed into a syringe so the mixture can be taken into a syringe so that they can only we can inject into the system i mean a rabbit system so the rabbit is prepared if we have a long if the rabbit has a long amount of hair or spur or something like that that can be cut by using scissors or by using some other sub, uh, some other materials we can uh, remove the hair so this emulsion or immunogen uh, with a and complete adjuvant is can be injected into the 1 ml syringe so 1 ml of immunogen along with the frat adjuvant the combination of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, 1 ml mixed and along with frat adjuvant solution can be taken as a combination with the 1 ml syringe uh, while after taking it we can inject into the particular mouse where we we are selected for this experiment so after injecting we can observe it for 10 weeks after 10 weeks we can take the blood of blood sample of the particular rabbit minimally mainly uh, especially 20 ml can be uh, taken we can't take more than 20 ml so after 10 weeks after immunization the blood can be uh, taken from the uh, uh, test rabbit so the blood can be clotted at a room temperature and then uh, after uh, clotting the blood the sample can be uh, clot centrifuged and can be stored at 4 degrees centigrade in the presence of uh, or in the presence or in the uh, uh, identification of uh, uh, anti serum so this after centrifugation uh, uh, after centrifugation technique of storing the 0.1% of sodium azide as antibacterial agent can be tested so while testing if the immunogen is satisfied it can go for uh, uh, further process so the test showed the characters required if we have uh, if we if we all if we have the characteristics of uh, anti serum if we have the characteristics of the requirements or the all proportion of components or the anti uh, bodies can be uh, obtained this uh, then we can go for purification and all those things so if the uh, if the anti serum is unsatisfactory so after 10 hours of after uh, sorry after 10 weeks of uh, uh, immunization uh, uh, you know if we of the blood sample is not uh, satisfied then we can go for another boosting another boosting or in the sense we can again we can give the uh, uh, immune or uh, sorry again we can immunize the particular rabbit and receives so that uh, we can give the second injection after uh, giving the first injection uh, the sample can be collected after 10 weeks so if the anti serum is not satisfactory now we are giving the second dose here now we are giving the second dose of injection here after giving the second dose of injection 10 days after giving the second dose of injection again bleeding can be carried out bleeding in the sense again uh, 20 ml of blood can be uh, taken and can be again tested for the uh, presence of anti serum or sorry presence of antibodies and all those things so further bleeding is carried out so if the boosting is anti serum is satisfactory the rabbit can perform the same three times can be uh, a three uh, uh, blood can be collected three times from the uh, particular uh, uh, rabbit so if the amount of anti sera is satisfactory a blood can be collected from the particular rabbit three times per day three times per day 20 ml each so after giving the second immunization the sample has been collected and tested the air ability or capability of the uh, blood sample or the immunogen or uh, sorry uh, antibodies uh, in a precipitate with the immunogen so after collecting this uh, second uh, uh, boosting or uh, blood sample it can be precipitated with immunogen by carrying immunodiffusion assay or electrophoresis assay so if the antibodies are collected or if the serum is collected from the particular uh, rat is satisfied and then further process can be uh, uh, can be carried out and a large amount of doses can be produced if the specific antibody can be determined so for identifying the specific antibody a anti serum a running of anti serum against a related antigen in arkitoni uh, sorry arkiloni diffusion assay this is an assay which used to detect uh, determine the specificity of antibody so arkitoni diffusion assay is to identify the specificity of antibody so after having the, all this uh, 
uh, experiment after having this uh, anti serum of uh, so uh, satisfied anti serum so this arcatalone diffusion technique is used to identify the specificity of the particular antibodies if the antibodies is exactly specific on a particular antigen then it is go for further uh, production and a large amount of uh, large scale of antibodies are can 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 be produced and immunized with uh, uh, I mean against different types of diseases so here of even after two dosages the, if the rabbit is not satisfactory to produce the exact amount of antibodies that we required then we can go for another rabbit and the same procedure can be carried out same procedure can be carried out so if the sat and I told you if anti sera is satisfactory and it can be stored in four degrees centigrade in the presence of an antibacterial agent for many months in the so uh, if it is satisfactory in the presence of an antibacterial agent so it can get, prevent from further infections or in the sense of contaminations so uh, in the sense of, uh, sorry by using this bad uh, uh, antibacterial agents we can store this anti serum at four degrees centigrade for further for further uses. So now how uh, 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 this is the same procedure initially now we are uh, uh, selecting the rabbits that we required and injecting the antigen after antigen it can uh, it can uh, activates uh, B lymphocytes which are present and it can start to produce uh, B cells or that is immune cells. So after producing uh, immune cells you know uh, uh, you know we can have uh, we can isolate that plasma and uh, we can as I told you that. Uh, uh, we can collect the blood sample of that particular rabbit and the antibodies or plasma can be separated so that the specific antibodies can be collected. So if it is secrete this, um, this the desired amount of antibodies, it secrete the uh, satisfactory amount of antibodies. So we can uh, purify it and we can go for further processing as I told you earlier containing anti serum of rabbit and clonal antibodies. So uh, this uh, this is one type of technique. Second one. Uh, so anti sera this is for uh, so if you want to produce anti sera for venom of for some snakes so the venom has been collected the venom can be diluted or venom can be uh, you know uh, uh, to make it into uh, not viable so that the, it can prepare some uh, antibodies of not viable so this antibodies are the venom can be injected into the horses that has be that has been immunized so the horses can the blood of horses can be collected uh, with the different interval uh, intervals i told you so after collecting that if we have uh, uh, exact amount of anti sera if it, the blood contains exact amount of anti sera IgG that's a fragments of IgG uh, is a type of immunoglobulin so if we have the specific antibody can be produced then we can go for the final product then the uh, is simply like a vaccine can be uh, or the dosage or the uh, you know uh, uh, dose can be produced of uh, uh, poison of uh, particular snakes then can go in for a final quality control that can be produced so here of antibodies of uh, two types that is polyclonal antibodies and uh, monoclonal antibodies so regarding that uh, the next powerpoint presentation is on monoclonal and polyclonal antibodies that are the main differences between uh, polyclonal and ending from monoclonal antibodies so hope you guys uh, uh, understand how uh, anti is uh, uh, produced again i'm coming rabbits is collected and it is immunizing with the uh, anti serum that is sorry immunizing with a particular uh, immunogen so immunogen in the sense antigen only there is nothing but uh, antigen only then we have adjuvant can be added and mixing with one is to three ratios and then uh, after injecting into the uh, mice or uh, rabbit uh, we can collect the blood sample after 10 weeks of immunization if the it is satisfactory then we can go for uh, uh, bleeding and then uh, you know uh, uh, preparation of, uh, of uh, product so if it is not satisfactory second immunization dose can be given after giving the second doses with that we have to wait for 10 days and again we can uh, take the bleed out we can take the blood of a particular uh, rabbit and we can test if it is satisfactory then we can go for further if even after second doses if it is not satisfactory then we can select the another rabbit and we can perform the same procedure